if you go buy the package you're gonna learn then you don't know what is in it but this could have been cut with vitamin e or cut with something else kind of sus you know i got to have grub but i have the grub also is in one okay all right you had a bunch of shit in there i don't know it's kind of hard to tell about you know what's bootleg and what's not it's unusual that they're this heavily contaminated. This is potentially deadly, this, this particular cartridge. When you're dealing with the black market, remember that there's risk, it's never 100%. I just felt like I was going to faint. I realized that there's something wrong with me. On the news, two or three people have already died. It's interesting that a lot of these cases fell off in the fall of 2019. It's and then true. It, it's gone. And that's what puzzles us the most. Like, where these people are still vaping out there. We see them all the time. Like, what happened? Why aren't they coming in anymore? Vaping illness blamed for fire. Antifa, Antifa is carrying murder hornet panic. 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 As clickbait headlines warp our view of the world, we're going down the rabbit hole to ask how afraid should we really be? On this episode, the mysterious vaping illnesses of 2019 that created a media frenzy. The Centers for Disease Control is warning people to stop using e-cigarettes following several mysterious deaths linked to vaping. The CDC investigating a medical mystery spreading across the country tonight. Two new deaths in Minnesota bring the nationwide total to 31 deaths. In three quarters were using THC-containing products. Doctors are now warning the public about what they call Ivali. There was a lot of confusion at first. Was this an e-cigarette thing, a THC thing? There were a lot of question marks. What we know now is that a lung injury called Ivali peaked in September of 2019. By February 2020, 2,800 cases and 68 deaths were linked to the injury. But where did Ivali come from? And should we still be afraid of vaping? I started going down the rabbit hole by first reaching out to Greg Rodriguez, who was sick with Ivali in September 2019. I remember thinking that it was a miracle, you know, these vapes, because it was no smell. And yeah, no more, uh, no more dryer sheets, right? <laughs> I remember, I remember those days, but yeah, exactly. Tell me about the onset of you starting to get sick. I felt very dehydrated. I felt like I was, uh, my chest was just becoming very tight. And it started to vomit like a greenish, yellowish type substance, which in hindsight, it was what was this vitamin E acetate that my body was trying to reject. After checking into a hospital in Queens, Greg was put into a coma by doctors and brought here to the Long Island Jewish Hospital. We sat down with Greg's physician, who treated Greg along with some of the first Ivali cases in New York. So how did you meet Greg? So we got called from one of our sister hospitals, Forest Hills, uh, that they had a young patient that they had just put on a ventilator in the ER. They wanted to let us know that uh, they were worried they were gonna run into trouble and could we think about putting him on ECMO? What is ECMO exactly? ECMO is extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, where we take the blood out of someone's body and we oxygenate it in an oxygenator outside of the body and then put it back in. So we use it as a replacement for your lungs when your lungs are not working. And it sort of buys you time for your lungs to get better. I think we cleaned out his lungs every single day for the first two days. And what came back with him was just this thick caramel looking stuff. Just his lungs were filled with it. This is his original chest x-ray when he came in and uh, if you look here uh, you could see that both of the lungs are involved there's the lungs should all be black like that and his lungs you can see have a lot of white areas here none of that should be there what exactly in the vaping caused these illnesses i still think we don't know for sure i think a lot of people have a lot of different theories and some think it was the vitamin e that was mixed in with the vaping product and some people think it was the flavoring some people think it was just the marijuana the way that it was heated and mixed in some way so i don't think we have an exact answer while the science is not fully understood it's thought that additives in the vaping oils break down and change when heated at the high temperatures required for vaping when these substances cool down, they may cause inflammation or coat the walls of the lungs in debris. Unprepared for these foreign objects, the lungs push the body into crisis mode. When these came out, we started to see news stories like, you should stop smoking e-cigarettes, this is an e-cigarette thing, and then it slowly shifted, that the story became, the picture became a little bit more clear that it was, oh, maybe it's mostly THC products, but then still certain people said that they didn't vape THC, that it was only nicotine. Do you believe that it's possible to get some of these illnesses from just vaping nicotine, or do you think that they maybe weren't exactly being totally truthful? We definitely saw patients who told us it was they only were taking nicotine. Um, 
I, th I think they were truthful. I do think that they don't know what they were taking. For Greg, that's exactly what happened. Basically, yeah, I had decided to, to stop buying off the street, and then I decided to take the risk of buying them in bulk on the dark web. So I thought I hit the jackpot, and it turns out that I made a, a huge mistake with uh, trying to get a good deal. When I first started to vape, uh, it was easy to spot a fake car. And then summer 2019, these, these fake cars um, came out. The oil inside it was so thick, it, it, and it just looked the same color. It, it just it felt so real. What Greg is referring to here is known as the bubble test, a lo-fi way to spot a fake cart. A high purity distillate would mean the bubble in the cartridge moves slowly or not at all when it is turned upside down. However, pure THC extract can be too thick to constantly flow to the coil. So cutting agents like terpenes can be added for both flavor and flow. Counterfeiters who might dilute the product for bigger profits could then add vitamin E acetate to rethicken the extract, fooling the bubble test and the consumer. The CDC says that vitamin E acetate is strongly linked to the Valley outbreak in 2019. But how prevalent is this dirty card industry? I asked Greg how hard it was to find a marketplace in the dark web. Anyone who wants to know would just go on Google and type in dark web best marketplaces. Okay. It, it, it seems like, you know, it's that easy, but you know, but yeah, it really is. After some surprisingly easy Google searches, I booted up my VPN, downloaded Tor, and started browsing the dark web. You're going on the dark web. Don't you know where to go? Oh, okay, we're in the tour. All right, so now I'm on the dark web. What do we got here? You can get a fake ID, driver's license, Adderall, 10 tabs of LSD for 30 bucks, Euro banknotes. Wow, you can get counterfeit money on here. Unbelievable. I spend money to make money. I wonder if I found my credit card information on here. That'd be really wild. Okay. We're here for a purpose. We're just looking for weed. Cannabis. Concentrates. Live resin, better than sex, better than money. Is it? After finding dozens of vendors that dealt THC cards, I slid into some DMs. Well, I didn't get too many responses back. I did get a suggestion I could easily find dirty cards in places like liquor or corner stores. With some spots in mind, I met up with the Dower Hour aficionado and sometimes camera operator, Taji Amin, to do some undercover research. So we're in Brooklyn right now where cannabis is legal, but that doesn't mean that you can't buy underground THC cartridges at a number of smoke and vape shops. So we're gonna go look around, see what these stores have, and I'm wearing a wire, and uh, hopefully I don't get caught. Can't see anything, right? Can't see anything, I'm wearing a wire here. Look okay. All right, let's go check it out. Oh, I'm so sketched out by myself. I wouldn't sell to me. All right. Hey, man. You guys got greens? No. No? Okay. Thanks, man. No go, no go. There's a couple more down here. I think it was a little sketched out by me. But... I mean, we just look like we're hanging out, right? Right? Okay, the next one's right up here. Hey, man, what's going on? You got any greens right now? Girl Scout. And these are legit, right? These, uh, these are bootleg, right? How much are they, man? 140. All right, one day when I get paid, man, I'll be back. All right, so you had a bunch of shit in there. They were $140 a piece. All right, we're going just across the street. Hey, man, how's it going? How are you? Good, how are you doing? Do you guys have greens? Huh? THC cartridges? It's a new company to give me. Yeah? Give me stuff, yeah. How much are these guys? 70. 70? Yeah, the half gram is 45. It's a good stuff. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. I've read about though. I've read that they, they've got the bootleg, that there's bootlegs out there, these. Uh, uh, so far, people come to buy it a lot. All right, that's all good, man. Thanks, dude. Yeah, uh, whew, he had a bunch of carts. He had like half grams, grams. I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell about, you know, what's bootleg and what's not. We were given a sample of a bodega bought THC cartridge. There's nothing in these right now, so I'm not in possession of THC. It looked real to me with nice packaging and branding, but was it? I connected with Push, a distributor of THC carts in New York City, to see if he knew anything about these corner store carts. I went shopping for some cartridges at a bodega. Do you like any of your, you know? I don't do nothing like that, no. Do you know where those cartridges come from? I mean, most likely they come from LA. If not, somebody, maybe they make them here. The THC cartridges that you're selling out here, are they licensed to be made in California? Yeah, some of them I'll have that are actual have license and 
there's a lot of vape brands in California that operate in the gray market. They have their own original packaging and their own original, you know, liquid, but they don't want to jump through the hoops to get licensed. What's the quality of, of something that's in the gray market? So, I mean, you can find really good shit. Like, I try to stick with brands that haven't gotten so big that they're, you know, counterfeited. If I could buy the package in Oman, I don't want that shit. I showed Push the sample we had obtained to get his opinion on it. The main thing is the packaging. Like, this is, you know, somebody spent good money to, to design all this shit. They got big enough, and then somebody else said, well, we want to rip that brand off, and they knew somebody, a graphic designer, or they knew somebody in China, and they just duplicated it, and now this is a clone. You don't know what the fuck is in this. It's not like you met Big Chief, right? Right, I don't know Big Chief. Yeah. So now you're doing the bubble test, right? Oh, that shit ain't moving. Okay. That's not moving. So somebody that would only go by the bubble test would say, oh, this is good because this shit don't move. It's not moving at all. Which would probably mean that you don't want to hit this thing. Rather than the bubble test, Push showed me what he called the Google test to avoid counterfeit brands. So Big Chief packaging is what you showed me, right? So the first thing that pops up is that. Holy shit. So let me see that again. This is exactly. OK. Look, you could buy 150 pieces of this at 214 a piece. Wow, and that looks legit, right? So that, yeah. looks, that looks nice. That looks exactly the same shit. Holy shit, so I have no idea. You don't know what this is. You don't know what's in that. Push showed me a number of different cart brands that had counterfeit clones, each of them looking like the real deal. Big Chief right now, their actual fucking website was all the way down here. Do they have anything on their site about, you know, uh... Yeah, here's how to verify the product. Okay. Is there a code somewhere? There it is. Ooh, not authentic. No way. Yeah. So somebody's selling this shit at bodegas in Brooklyn, and it's not legitimate. That's just crazy, man. Yeah, Google test. Google test. Google test for the win. Realizing that I had a counterfeit cartridge, I had to find out what was actually in this thing. I reached out to Pro Verde Labs to run some tests on our sample. The lab results that came back were alarming to say the least. The sample exceeded the acceptable amount for eight pesticides, as well as contained a concentration of vitamin E acetate. We saw this in there at about 8%, a little over 8.5%. This is potentially deadly, this, this particular cartridge. The pesticides were there at such a heavy concentration that we had to do further dilutions uh, and able to analyze that and still be within our calibration per range. Wow. So it's unusual that they are this heavily contaminated. Were you surprised to find vitamin E acetate in, in this cartridge? I was. It's well known. There's better alternatives. I thought by now that there would be no more in production and that what had been produced would have already been either uh, purchased, consumed, or disposed of. Uh, apparently that's not the case. And then in addition, I mean, you usually find some levels of pesticides, but this one had um, a lot of pesticides. You know, we see in this one biphenazate at 190,000 parts per billion. This is 190 times uh, what would be permissible in California. I don't know what the long-term effect of consuming a product like this would be, but it's not good. The pesticides were uh, not meant to be put in our body. Are vaping products safe or is the market just so unregulated that it's not even worth the risk? All states now have a, a supply chain of regulated, safe produced products. If you're sourcing products from uh, reputable uh, suppliers, I, I don't think that there's any concern for that. So I'm just curious to know, as, as a professional like yourself, what do you think the media got right and what do you think the media got wrong in this situation? I think as, as human beings, we try to simplify things into our what we're capable of understanding. And I think the problem with the, the vape crisis is it's a very, very complex issue. When we see these acute things happening, people dying, we look for the culprit. And I think it's so hard because I think there's a mixture of components that may be responsible for the hazards associated with it, not just the vitamin E acetate. So the vitamin E acetate is very much like that could affect you in the very short term, whereas these other, other uh, the flavorings and the pesticides, we don't know what the long-term consequences of them are. Sure, they, they, could, be, they could result in you know, generations of increased uh, lung cancer because of these. We don't, we don't know. You know. These could be 10, 20 years out till we, till we understand it. I mean, think about 
um, the, the tobacco industry. And we may find the same thing 10 years down the road with vape products associated with cannabis or, or nicotine. This story doesn't really have an ending. Toxic vape cartridges will continue to flood the streets. Nicotine, THC, legal, gray market, and black market, it's out there. And even though we don't hear much about it volley anymore, it still seems very easy to find vitamin E acetate in counterfeit cartridges. The news cycle seems to have washed away this story as we all moved on to more immediate problems, which there are a lot of these days. But whether you vape or are impacted by stories that have faded from the front page, the only way to stay informed is to take matters into your own hands and do what Push does. Google it.